Who was Henry Moore? Henry Moore, 1898-1986, was one of the most significant modernist sculptors. And arguably the most important British sculptor, of the 20th century. His work was influenced by non-Western art, especially Mayan art. His abstractions of the human form, such as reclining figure, 1929 were directly inspired by Chikmul figures, which also recline, from Chichen Itza in Mexico. Representations of reclining forms, family groups, and mother and child peers were an enduring subject for the artist. Moore's style is described as biomorphic, meaning that his figural abstractions are often soft, undulating, and organic. He also produced large sculptures that were hollow and pierced, emphasizing the mystery of negative space. Moore was incredibly prolific in his later years, requiring teams of assistants to produce monumental works of public sculpture, which can be seen around the globe. What is Mana? Mana is an important concept in much Pacific art that is essential for understanding the power of art in many Pacific cultures. Mana is a sacred, spiritual power possessed by individuals and art objects alike. It is invisible but formidable, and the amount of mana one has is related to one's proximity to the gods. For example, a tribal chief and related nobles have mana because of their divine lineage. Mana can be gained or lost based on one's actions or behaviors. Such as through acts of strength or acts of cowardice, for example. The mana of a work of art is related to the status and skill of the artist who created the piece. As well as the materials used to make it, the age of the object, and the rituals for which it is used. What was the Harlem Renaissance? The Harlem Renaissance was a cultural movement that grew from the 19th century New Negro movement. Intellectuals such as Alain Locke, 1886-1954, called on black artists, writers, musicians, and thinkers to draw inspiration from their African roots rather than white European traditions. Blues and Jazz played by musicians such as Bessie Smith and Duke Ellington, and poetry by writers such as Langston Hughes, were part of a cultural explosion that centered on the New York City urban experience. Visual artists, including the photographer James Van Der Zee, and painters Palmer Hayden, 1890-1964, to and Aaron Douglas, whose painting Aspects of Negro Life, From Slavery Through Reconstruction, 1934, is an example of the influence of African art styles on black artists during the Harlem Renaissance. The painting represents the history of black Americans and is populated with figurative silhouettes reminiscent of ancient Egyptian paintings. With a limited color palette, Douglas' painting is filled with energy, 
movement. And sound in its depiction of the Emancipation Proclamation, Civil War Reconstruction, and voting rights. At the far left of the scene, the Ku Klux Klan threaten on horseback. But repeating circles draw attention to a triumphant figure at the center, who holds a ballot in his hand. Who was Georgia O'Keeffe? Although Georgia O'Keeffe, 1887-1986, is quite popular for her large, highly detailed paintings of flowers, throughout her career she painted a range of subjects from New York City skyscrapers to dessert scenes, cow skulls, and adobe architecture. O'Keeffe was a modernist painter whose work was highly distilled and so precise it could border on the abstract. Georgia O'Keeffe's first solo show was in 1917 at the 921 Gallery. Run by photographer and collector Alfred Stieglitz, who she later married. After his death in 1946, O'Keeffe permanently relocated to New Mexico where she was interested in the sun's effect on the visual quality of objects and lived an isolated life. Her work oscillates between realism and abstraction. And her powerful images have brought her celebrity status as an artist. What is a skyscraper? A skyscraper is a tall, multi-story building with a steel frame and thin walls known as curtain walls because they are not load-bearing. Because the steel frame acts as a support skeleton. Skyscrapers are often covered in glass or windows, similar in some ways to a Gothic cathedral. While the earliest skyscrapers were built in Midwest cities such as Chicago and St. Louis, some of the most famous early skyscrapers are New York's Chrysler Building, 1930, and Empire State Building, 1931. Along with the development of skyscrapers came the need to introduce new fireproofing and elevator technology. What is Klimt's golden style? Gustav Klimt was an Austrian artist who was the first president of a group called the Vienna Secession. A group of artists that favored highly decorative styles aligned to Art Nouveau and wanted to break from the conservative artistic traditions of the Austrian Academy. Klimt applied gold leaf to many of his works, the most famous being The Kiss. 1907-1908, which depicts two lovers in a vulnerable embrace. The highly decorative style of the piece fits appropriately into the Art Nouveau aesthetic. But the ornate quality of Klimt's work belies its complexity. Klimt's golden masterpieces, and his legacy, are still hotly debated by art critics and historians who argue about his impact on the history of art. But, in 2006, his silver and gold leafed oil painting, Portrait of Adele Blockbauer I. 
1907, sold for a reported $135 million, making it, temporarily, the most expensive painting ever sold. What is Nouveau Realisme, New Realism? Founded in 1960 by French art critic Pierre Restani, Nouveau Realisme is an art movement that developed as a reaction against 20th century abstraction and art informal. Many of the Nouveau Realists, or New Realists, were not painters. But artists who experimented with art forms such as decollage, a process of ripping or tearing an image. Usually posters of advertisements, to create something new. The best examples of Nouveau Realist decollage is the Work of François Dufresne and Mimo Rotella, 1918-2006. The artist Jean Tingueli, 1925-1991, extended this technique to include scrap metal. Old bottles, motors, and other industrial objects in his work, Homage to New York, 1960 which he designed to spectacularly self-destruct at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. By contrast, Eve Klein, 1928-1962, was a painter who explored the power of pure color. Even developing his own blue, called International Klein Blue, 1 KB. The new realists used the objects of the real world, often junk, as their palette. And by doing so commented on modern life in a manner unique from other artists of the period. Who was Vincent van Gogh? During his lifetime, Dutch artist Vincent van Gogh, 1853-1890, was not well understood. And he died young, at the age of 37, of a gunshot wound. Although no gun was ever found, his death has always been considered a suicide. He suffered intense bouts of depression, spent time in an asylum in southern France, and is, of course, famous for cutting off his own ear, though this story has its critics. A violent event that was documented in Van Gogh's self-portrait with bandaged ear, 1889. Although Van Gogh's troubled life receives a great deal of attention, it is his incredible artistic talent that endures. His paintings, such as The Starry Night, 1889, Bedroom in Alls, 1888. Still Life, Vase with Twelve Sunflowers, 1888. And his many expressive self portraits are among the most highly sought after works of art in the world. His goal was to create art that would appeal to everyone, not only the rich who could afford fine art. In Paris, he saw the brilliant colors of the Impressionists and was fascinated by Japanese ukiyo-e paintings. Inspired by pointillism, Van Gogh experimented with fragmented brush strokes to create brightness and energy in his work. And he attempted to communicate intensity and emotion through expressive color and forms. His work was highly textured, dynamic. 
and an important part of the newly developing expressionist style, a modernist movement that also included Edvard Munch and later included Franz Marc, Vasily Kandinsky, and Ernst Ludwig Kirchner. Van Gogh was active for a mere 10 years, and during that time he produced some of the most iconic images in Western art, an empty chair, the lurching room at his home in Alls. The dark undulations of a cypress tree perched along the horizon. What is a Hopi Kots in a figure? The Hopi people, whose name means peaceful ones, are Native Americans from the American Southwest. In the Hopi religion, Katsinas, or Kachinas, are important benevolent spirits that personify natural elements in the real world. Representations of Katsina spirits are an important part of ritual dance. When Katsina dancers ceremonially impersonate the spirits. Carved figures representing Katsinas are also an important part of the Hopi religious and artistic tradition. Carved Katsina figures can be given to children as presents and as educational tools. Katsina spirits are often associated with rain bringing deities or deities related to fertility or hunting. Hopi Katsina 232 figures are often made of carved cottonwood roots and decorated with feathers. They are painted with diverse patterns and symbols. For example geometric patterns that symbolize water, and lightning bolts that symbolize rain and storms. Who were the eight? The eight was a group of American realist artists with diverse styles Robert Henry, 1865 to 1929, Arthur B. Davies, 1863 to 1928, William Glackens, 1870 to 1938, Ernest Lawson, 1873-1939, George Lux, 1867-1933. Maurice Prendergast, 1858-1924, Everett Shin, 1876-1953, and John Sloan. 1871-1951. All of whom were rejected by the National Academy for a spring exhibition in 1907. In response, they had their own show at the Macbeth Gallery in New York City in 1908. Many of these artists went on to be known as members of the Ashkent School, a group who made gritty, realistic paintings of urban life. Their one and only show as the eight received mixed reviews. With some critics feeling that the underbelly urban life was not appropriate subject matter for art. But it went on to make a major impact on American realism in the 20th century. Though some use the terms the eight and Askin school interchangeably, they are not exactly the same. What is art informal? Art informal, also known as both Tashism and lyrical abstraction, 
was essentially the European equivalent of American abstract expressionism. With an emphasis on non-geometric abstraction, spontaneity, and expressive brushwork. In French, the word tache, of tachism, means splotch. Referring to the manner in which paint has been blotted onto the canvas. Artists associated with art informal include Jean Fourier, 1898-1964, Hans Hartung. 1904-1989, and Alfred Otto Wolfgang Schultz, better known as Wohls, 1913-1951. The work of Jean Dubuffet, which is associated with Art Brut, is also sometimes categorized as Art Informal. Who was Joseph Cornell? Joseph Cornell, 1903-1972, was a self-taught American artist and filmmaker from New York, who experimented with surrealist collage and assemblage, and is most celebrated for his shadow. Boxes filled with meticulously curated objets trouvés, found objects, which exhibit the artist's eclectic and intellectual interests from astronomy to arcades, from ballet to film. Cornell exhibited his work at the surrealist Julian Levy Gallery, bringing distinction to the art of assemblage. Cornell's boxes have been interpreted as constructivist and have also been likened to visual poems, filled with surprising, often playful objects. For example, Homage to the Romantic Ballet. 1942, holds six frosted glass cubes on a reflective plate above a blue, velvet surface. On the inside of the lid is an inscription a lyrical telling of a carriage ride on a moonlit night. Another piece, untitled, Hotel Eden, 1945, features a cutout of a tropical bird. Whitewashed wood, and paint splattered newsprint, which creates a nostalgic image of paradise. Many of Cornell's assemblages are on display at the Art Institute of Chicago. Who was Henri Cartier-Bresson? While the FSA photographers focused their attention on rural America, French photographer Henri Cartier-Bresson 1908-2004, documented the Spanish Civil War, 1936-1939, and much of 20th century Europe. Cartier-Bresson is considered one of the foremost early photojournalists, which means he communicated the news through pictures, but he was also deeply inspired by surrealism and took seemingly spontaneous snapshots while walking through the streets of Paris. Henri Cartier-Bresson is known for his uncanny ability to remain neutral as a photographer, to maintain a fly-on-the-wall perspective. He also subtly incorporates psychological interest into his work making his seemingly simple photographs emotionally and intellectually complex. What is Expressionism?
The term expressionism is commonly used in the arts, but with a capital E. It refers to an art movement that developed in Germany at the start of the 20th century. German expressionism, like Fauvism, was concerned with communicating powerful feelings. Through color and visual style and expressionist works often incorporate meaningful symbols. There were two important groups of painters who were part of the expressionist movement in Germany. The first was called Die Brücke, the bridge. And the second was known as Der Blaue Reiter, the Blue Riders. What does the Farm Security Administration have to do with art? In 1935, the Farm Security Administration, FSA, was established in order to document and communicate the devastating impact of the Great Depression, especially on farm workers and the rural poor. American economist Roy Stryker hired a team of photographers. That included Walker Evans and Dorothea Lang, among others. Walker Evans, 1903-1975, had studied literature in Paris and was direct in his approach to photography. His work powerfully documents struggling families. Notably in West Virginia, during the period between World Wars I and II. Dorothea Lang, 1895-1965, had a photography studio in San Francisco, but when hired by Roy Stryker, she traveled to see firsthand what migrant farm workers had to endure. Her photographs, including Migrant Mother, 1936, Migratory Cotton Picker, 1940, and Wife of a Migratory Farmer in her makeshift tent home, are eloquent and forceful. What were Haida totem poles? The Haida people lived along the Pacific coast in an area that stretched from California to Alaska. The Haida had rich traditions of weaving, carving, and sculpting and their totem poles which served as important representations of social status. Are examples of monumental sculptures usually carved from cedar trees. A significant art form for at least 300 years. Totem poles depict images of animals or other natural object that serve as a spiritual emblem. Haida totems depict details of family lineage and social status. And were valuable enough to occasionally lead to warfare as clans disputed rightful ownership of totemic images. Haida totem poles could be placed either inside or outside, and could be as much as 60 feet tall. Outside, totem poles could be freestanding and painted and were used to guide canoes to shore. Totem poles were also used as structural support inside houses, while shorter poles were used for burials. What is the difference between the art of the many cultures of Africa? Africa is an enormous continent, and there is huge cultural diversity among the peoples of Africa. 
Each culture produced art with distinctive forms and styles based on religious beliefs. Local materials, and ritual use. The following is a list of selected cultures, their geographic region. And an example of the types of art they produce. What is American regionalism? While some American artists and critics were enamored with European modernism, others like Edward Hopper, 1882 to 1967, Grant Wood, 1892 to 1942, and Thomas Hart Benton. 1889 to 1975, turned inward and examined American life during the 1930s and 1940s. The quiet, lonely paintings of Hopper, such as his famous Nighthawks, 1942. A painting that depicts a brightly lit, if empty, restaurant interior on a dark night, evoke a sense of isolation. Iowa-born artist Grant Wood studied in Paris where he was exposed to the realism of the Northern Renaissance. A realism that he infused into his now iconic painting, American Gothic, 1930. Which depicts a farmer couple, actually modeled by the artist's sister and a local dentist, who stand in front of their clabbered home. Exaggerated to have the look of a gothic cathedral with long, pointed windows. Wood's painting glorifies the hard-working, American farmer. Thomas Hart Benton also memorialized the American worker in his series of murals. For the new school of social research in New York City, called America Today. American regionalism provided a comfortable depiction of America's heartland after the challenges of the Great Depression and World War II. Essentially a realist style, though also occasionally political. It fell out of favor as European-inspired modernism dominated the American art scene during the 1940s. Who was Broncusi? Constantine Broncusi, 1876 to 1957, a Romanian sculptor, was one of the most innovative and original modern sculptors of the 20th century. During his early career he studied under Impressionist sculptor Auguste Rodin. But he soon broke away to being experimenting with extreme simplification and abstraction. And he was inspired by the art of non-Western cultures and traditional craftsmanship. He worked in various media, including bronze, stone, and wood. The Kiss 1913, is a representational sculpture of two figures embracing. But it has been so reduced, it appears block-like, though still full of life. The ovoid form of his MLLE Pogany, 1913, is highly polished, resulting in a smooth reflective surface. Broncusi is also known for his series of sensitive sculptures of birds, especially his series Bird in Space. 1923, in which the form of a bird has been reduced to a solid, delicate curve. Broncusi's work achieves a seemingly impossible balance between softness, 
durability, dynamism, and serenity. What is precisionism? Precisionism, a term coined by American modernist artist Charles Sheeler. 1883 to 1965, is sometimes also called Cubist Realism. The movement began in the 1920s and was an early American modernist movement. Characterized by geometric simplification and broad areas of flat, hard-edged color. Precisionist paintings often depict abstract architectural or industrial scenes. The precisionist work of Charles Sheeler, such as Church Street L. 1920, are clearly influenced by the artist's experience as a photographer, and emphasize the man-made world. Other artists associated with precisionism are Charles de Muth, 1883 to 1935 and Georgia O'Keeffe 1887 to 1986 whose works Radiator Building Night 1927 and City Night 1926 are good examples of the style What was the Armory show In 1913, the Armory Show introduced America to European modernism. The Armory Show was actually called the International Exhibition of Modern Art, which was held at the 69th Regiment Armory in New York City. It was organized by the Association of American Painters and Sculptors and displayed a range of styles. From American realism to Impressionism to European modernism. Although European modernism made up a small portion of the art in the exhibition, it made shockwaves among American viewers and critics. The Fave works by Matisse, and the Cubism of Picasso and Brock were highly criticized. Marcel Duchamp's nude descending the staircase was deemed to look like a pile of twigs. Despite this sensational backlash, which attracted thousands of visitors to both the New York and the additional Chicago location, the Armory Show made an unprecedented impact on American avant-garde artists and collectors. Marking the beginning of modernism's dominance of the American art scene throughout much of the 20th century. What is a Navajo sand painting? Sand painting is an essential part of traditional healing ceremonies for the Native American. Navajo people of the American Southwest. Using natural materials such as colorful powdered stones, pigments, and even corn pollen, Navajo medicine men ritualistically recreate the mythological journeys of gods and heroes to form complex images with healing powers. Najavo sand paintings, also called dry paintings, are often composed of highly stylized repetitive geometric forms such as curved and angled lines. Completed paintings are never publicly shared and they are destroyed once the ceremony is over. Though some sand painting imagery has been published, 
and photographs are owned by the Library of Congress and other institutions. Strict adherence to ritual tradition is necessarily in order for the healing ceremony to be successful. The American Abstract Expressionist Artist, Jackson Pollock was inspired by the process of creating the sand painting which is laid flat on the ground while the artist stands over it a process Pollock used when making his own art. What is Art Brute? Art brut, meaning raw art, is a term coined by French painter Jean Dubuffet. 1901 to 1985, in 1945 to describe outsider art, or, art made by individuals without academic training. Including the art of children, criminals, and the mentally ill. Along with surrealist Andre Breton and art critic Michel Tappy. Dubuffet founded the company de l'Art Brut, which collected art brut created by mental Swiss mental patients. This collection grew to over 2,000 works and was later donated by Dubuffet to the Swiss city of Lausanne. In 1971, Dubuffet whose own art was greatly inspired by outsider art. Was interested in spontaneity, originality, and freedom from the social constraints of art production. What was Cobra? Cobra was an international group of artists whose name was derived from the home cities of its founding members, Copenhagen, Brussels, and Amsterdam. The group was founded by Danish painter Esther Jorn, 1914-1973, and poet Christian Dutch Ramont. 1922-1979, in a Paris cafe in 1948. The group lasted until 1951. They rejected surrealism. And like other artistic movements after World War II, were interested in starting fresh, and developing a new art for the post-war age. For Cobra, this meant emphasizing spontaneous creativity and artistic experimentation. Many of the works by group members, which also included Carol Appel, 1921-2006, George Constant, 1920-2005, and Cornet, 1922-2010, were bold, expressive, and steeped in fantasy. In Jorn's painting in the beginning was the image, 1965 to 1966. Primary colors dominate and appear smeared across the canvas while Constance fantastic animals. 1947, evokes primal instincts through childlike depictions of wild beasts. Cobra members also valued the art of all people, regardless of background, social class, or academic training, and were particularly inspired by children's drawings. What was the Chicago School? The Chicago School is a name given to a group of architects and designers. Working in Chicago around the turn of the century, including Daniel Burnham. 
1846-1912, William L. E. Barron Jenny, 1832-1907, and Louis Sullivan, 1856-1924. One of the greatest engineering innovations associated with the Chicago School is the development of the steel-framed skyscraper. The use of iron and steel allowed engineers to build ever taller buildings, usually for commercial purposes. Some of the earliest skyscrapers include the Home Insurance Building, 1884 and the 10-story Rand McNally building designed by Burnham and Root in 1889 Who was Antoni Gotti Antoni Gaudi, 1853-1926, was a Spanish architect whose fantastical style reflected the Art Nouveau aesthetic and is most closely associated with a Spanish movement called Modernismo. Gaudi was interested in developing a specifically Catalonian aesthetic within Spanish architecture and his greatest works were constructed in the Catalonian city of Barcelona. Catalonia is a region in Spain and its people have a distinctive culture and language. Gaudi's buildings are highly decorative, fluid, and imaginative often with bright colors, and glittering mosaic elements. For example, his design for Park Güell, 1900-1914, includes a lizard-shaped fountain covered in mosaic tiles. Seemingly lurching along a flight of stairs. Gaudi's masterpiece is the perpetually unfinished Sagrada Familia Cathedral Complex. His first large commission. His unique design was inspired by Moorish architecture and features eight rounded stone spires. Gaudi's highly individual architectural style is considered by some to be a precursor to surrealism and went on to inspire early 20th century expressionist architecture. What are Bisjay poles? The Bisjay pole is an important ritual wood carving made by the Asmat people of the western portion of New Guinea. The Bisjay pole is a tall, narrow ancestor pole depicting ancestor spirits standing upon one another and can be approximately 20 feet high. The Bisjay pole plays an important role in the Ismat tradition of head hunting, and is used in ceremonies related to the cycle of life, death, and warfare. The Ismat make the Bisjay pole from sago palm because, according to legends, as Matt ancestors were first created from sago palms by a divine hero named J, the first being on earth. This fact emphasizes the Asmat correlation between the human body and the tree. By extension, the human head is symbolically represented as fruit. On the pole itself, carved images of birds eating fruit represent the head hunter who eats the brain of a warrior he has captured. Large, protruding fins at the top of the Bisjay pole are phallic symbols of power and virility. What are Bisjay poles?
the Bisjay pole is an important ritual wood carving made by the Asmat people of the western portion of New Guinea. The Bisjay pole is a tall, narrow ancestor pole depicting ancestor spirits standing upon one another and can be approximately 20 feet high. The Bisjay pole plays an important role in the Ismat tradition of head hunting and is used in ceremonies related to the cycle of life, death, and warfare. The Ismat make the Bisjay pole from Sago palm because, according to legends, Ismat ancestors were first created from Sago palms by a divine hero named Fumaripatsjay, the first being on earth. This fact emphasizes the Ismat correlation between the human body and the tree. By extension, the human head is symbolically represented as fruit. On the pole itself, carved images of birds eating fruit represent the head hunter who eats the brain of a warrior he has captured. Large, protruding fins at the top of the Bisjay pole are phallic symbols of power and virility. What is a Ngatu? A Ngatu is a royal Tongan bark cloth made by women. The Kingdom of Tonga is a group of over 100 islands located southeast of Fiji and southwest of Samoa. Fiji and Samoa also have bark cloth design traditions. Textiles such as the Ngatu are highly prized items and are given as gifts during ceremonies and special occasions. Ngatu are hand-painted, rubbed with dye, stenciled, and perfumed. Usually deep brown, black, and beige in color, they can feature highly abstract designs. Or depict naturalistic images such as fish, or other sea life. What is a Ngatu? A Ngatu is a royal Tongan bark cloth made by women. The Kingdom of Tonga is a group of over 100 islands located southeast of Fiji and southwest of Samoa. Fiji and Samoa also have bark cloth design traditions. Textiles such as the Ngatu are highly prized items and are given as gifts during ceremonies and special occasions. Ngatu are hand-painted, rubbed with dye, stenciled, and perfumed. Usually deep brown, black, and beige in color, they can feature highly abstract designs or depict naturalistic images such as fish, or other sea life. What is the significance of the meeting house in Pacific cultures? Meeting or ceremonial houses are a significant part of Pacific architecture. And many Pacific cultures use these larger halls or houses for religious or rite of passage ceremonies. For example, the Abalam people of the East Sepik province in New Guinea display art and ritual objects in ceremonial houses in order to attract spirits during rituals.
Abalam ceremonial houses are traditionally decorated with art objects made in a variety of materials. Including fruit, leaves, stones, and shells. On the island of New Ireland, ceremonial houses are essential for Malagan. Ceremonies and wood sculptures are carved and displayed at the front of the house. In the mid-19th century, Master Carver Rihara Hirokupo supervised the construction of Te Hauki Duranga. A Maori meeting house in Gisborne, New Zealand. The house, a type known as a Warinui, is covered in detailed. High relief wood carvings that have been rubbed with shark liver oil and red clay to produce rich color and luminescence. Along the 234 A frame ceiling, is a repeating pattern of painted wood rafters and lattice panels. Which were made by women artisans. Though the nature of the carvings is traditional. They were done with European style metal tools during a time in the colonial 19th century. As Maori architecture was changing under the influence of Christianity. Meeting houses across the Pacific serve as important locations for community meetings. Rituals, and other ceremonial uses. Their construction is inextricably related to the creation of art objects. And to both the political and spiritual function they serve within a culture. What is the significance of the meeting house in Pacific cultures? Meeting or ceremonial houses are a significant part of Pacific architecture. And many Pacific cultures use these larger halls or houses for religious or rite of passage ceremonies. For example, the Abalam people of the East Sepik province in New Guinea display art. And ritual objects in ceremonial houses in order to attract spirits during rituals. Abalam ceremonial houses are traditionally decorated with art objects made in a variety of materials. Including fruit, leaves, stones, and shells. On the island of New Ireland, ceremonial houses are essential for Malagan. Ceremonies and wood sculptures are carved and displayed at the front of the house. In the mid-19th century, Master Carver Rihara Hirokupo supervised the construction of Te Hauki Duranga. A Maori meeting house in Gisborne, New Zealand. The house, a type known as a Warinui, is covered in detailed. High relief wood carvings that have been rubbed with shark liver oil and red clay to produce rich color and luminescence. Along the 234 A frame ceiling, is a repeating pattern of painted wood rafters and lattice panels. Which were made by women artisans. Though the nature of the carvings is traditional. They were done with European style metal tools during a time in the colonial 19th century. As Maori architecture was changing under the influence of Christianity. Meeting houses across the Pacific serve as important locations for community meetings. Rituals, and other ceremonial uses. Their construction is inextricably related to the creation of art objects. And to both the political and spiritual function they serve within a culture.
What is the carny cloak? The carny cloak is a Hawaiian feathered cape that was given as a gift to King George III of England by Hawaiian King Kamehameha around 1843. The red and yellow cape was made of coconut fiber to which feathers were attached. Worn like a cloak, the garment is known as a ahuula, red cloak, due to its color. In Hawaii, red is symbolic of royalty, and feathers were used to decorate luxury. High status items such as clothing, blankets, and lays, traditional Hawaiian garlands. The status of the Karni cloak is tied to the status of the Hawaiian king. And is therefore an appropriate and significant gift for another ruler. What is the carny cloak? The carny cloak is a Hawaiian feathered cape that was given as a gift to King George III of England by Hawaiian King Kamehameha around 1843. The red and yellow cape was made of coconut fiber to which feathers were attached. Worn like a cloak, the garment is known as a ahuula, red cloak, due to its color. In Hawaii, red is symbolic of royalty, and feathers were used to decorate luxury. High status items such as clothing, blankets, and lays, traditional Hawaiian garlands. The status of the carny cloak is tied to the status of the Hawaiian king. And is therefore an appropriate and significant gift for another ruler. What is the significance of tattoos for Pacific cultures? Tattooing was, and continues to be, an important part of cultural and religious tradition throughout the Pacific. Especially in Polynesia and New Zealand. The English word for tattoo even comes from the Polynesian word tata. Body art, including clothing and jewelry, as well as tattoos, indicates status. With specific patterns associated with particular ranks within a society. Tattoo designs were usually geometric. The Maori of New Zealand, whose word for tattoo is moko, have separate tattoo styles for men and women. And tattoos of different meanings were placed on different parts of the body. For example, Tattoos on the right side of the face represented social status and lineage handed down from the father's side of the family. While tattoos on the left side on the face communicated maternal lineage. Bodies of the most prominent members of society could be completely covered in tattoos. After a period of decline, tattoos are once again being used to communicate status and cultural identity among the Maori of New Zealand. What is the significance of tattoos for Pacific cultures? Tattooing was, and continues to be, an important part of cultural and religious tradition throughout the Pacific. 
especially in Polynesia and New Zealand. The English word for tattoo even comes from the Polynesian word tata. Body art, including clothing and jewelry, as well as tattoos, indicates status. With specific patterns associated with particular ranks within a society. Tattoo designs were usually geometric. The Maori of New Zealand, whose word for tattoo is moko, have separate tattoo styles for men and women. And tattoos of different meanings were placed on different parts of the body. For example, tattoos on the right side of the face represented social status and lineage handed down from the father's side of the family. While tattoos on the left side on the face communicated maternal lineage. Bodies of the most prominent members of society could be completely covered in tattoos. After a period of decline, tattoos are once again being used to communicate status and cultural identity among the Maori of New Zealand. What is Aboriginal art? Aboriginal art is the art of the indigenous people of Australia, whose artistic traditions continue to thrive to this day. Aboriginal art includes rock art, body art, bark paintings, fiber arts, and portable sculptures. Aboriginal people are traditionally nomadic. Aboriginal peoples have lived in Australia for the last 40,000 years and their art is closely connected to their religious beliefs and complex mythology. The Aboriginal spiritual world is called Jakarpa, which is usually translated into English as the dreaming or the dream time, and emphasizes the connection between spiritual powers and place. It is important to note that Aboriginal artists are not creating anything new or original, but are reinterpreting designs and artistic elements that have been passed down by spirit ancestors. Many contemporary Aboriginal artists now use acrylic paint to create traditional dot paintings or bark paintings. The work of 20th century Aboriginal artist Clifford Possum Tijapal Jari, 1932-2002 helped bring Aboriginal art to the attention of the international art world and it is now part of major museum and gallery collections around the globe. What is Aboriginal art? Aboriginal art is the art of the indigenous people of Australia, whose artistic traditions continue to thrive to this day. Aboriginal art includes rock art, body art, bark paintings, fiber arts and portable sculptures, Aboriginal people are traditionally nomadic. Aboriginal peoples have lived in Australia for the last 40,000 years and their art is closely connected to their religious beliefs and complex mythology. The Aboriginal spiritual world is called Jakarpa, which is usually translated into English as the dreaming or the dream time and emphasizes the connection between spiritual powers and place. It is important to note that Aboriginal artists are not creating anything new or original, 
but are reinterpreting designs and artistic elements that have been passed down by spirit ancestors. Many contemporary Aboriginal artists now use acrylic paint to create traditional dot paintings or bark paintings. The work of 20th century Aboriginal artist Clifford Possum Tijapal Jari, 1932-2002 Help bring Aboriginal art to the attention of the international art world and it is now part of major museum and gallery collections around the globe. What is pop art? Pop art began in the 1950s in Britain, the term itself was invented by English art critic Lawrence Alloway. And became one of the most influential art movements of the mid-20th century. Particularly in Britain and the United States. Pop artists challenged the status of fine art by relying on mass media images. Such as those from advertisements and popular culture, to create artworks. Key pop artists include Alan Jones, 1937, Eduardo Bolazzi, 1924 to 2005, Peter Blake, 1930, and Richard Hamilton, 1922 to 2011, all of whom worked primarily in the UK. American pop artists include Roy Lichtenstein, 1923-2007, Robert Rauschenberg, 1925-2008, Jasper Johns, 1930, and most notably, Andy Warhol, 1928-1987. Early pop art shows were held in London and New York City including the This Is Tomorrow show at the Whitechapel Art Gallery and a number of shows at New York's Sydney Janus Gallery. Critics were mixed in their reviews. With many critics shocked at the use of low art to create works of fine art. For example, Robert Rauschenberg, who studied painting under Bauhaus artist Joseph Albers created a series of works incorporating the Coca-Cola logo and Roy. Lichtenstein's large paintings mimicked the look and style of comic book art. Pop art questioned the difference between good and bad taste. And broadened the scope of possible fine art subject matter to include everyday objects and culture. What is pop art? Pop art began in the 1950s in Britain, the term itself was invented by English art critic Lawrence Alloway. And became one of the most influential art movements of the mid-20th century particularly in Britain and the United States. Pop artists challenged the status of fine art by relying on mass media images, such as those from advertisements and popular culture, to create artworks. Key pop artists include Alan Jones, 1937, Eduardo Bolazzi, 1924-2005, Peter Blake, 1930, and Richard Hamilton, 1922-2011, all of whom worked primarily in the UK. American pop artists include Roy Lichtenstein, 1923-2007, Robert Rauschenberg, 
1925 to 2008, Jasper Johns, 1930, and most notably, Andy Warhol, 1928 to 1987. Early pop art shows were held in London and New York City. Including the This Is Tomorrow show at the Whitechapel Art Gallery and a number of shows at New York's Sydney Janus Gallery. Critics were mixed in their reviews. With many critics shocked at the use of low art to create works of fine art. For example, Robert Rauschenberg, who studied painting under Bauhaus artist Joseph Albers. Created a series of works incorporating the Coca-Cola logo and Roy. Lichtenstein's large paintings mimicked the look and style of comic book art. Pop art questioned the difference between good and bad taste. And broadened the scope of possible fine art subject matter to include everyday objects and culture. Who was Andy Warhol? Andy Warhol, 1928 to 1987, was an iconic artist celebrity whose pop art images of camels, soup cans and film celebrities continue to be highly recognizable and immensely valuable. Popularly known for his bleach blonde hair, dark sunglasses, and turtleneck sweaters. Andy Warhol was interested in stripping mass media images of their symbolic value, thus rendering them anew. Born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Warhol studied at the Carnegie Institute and moved New York City in 1949. Where he began a career in commercial art. He also worked in painting, printmaking, sculpture, and film. Warhol's New York studio, dubbed, The Factory, was where Warhol and his team of assistants used silk screen machines to mass produce images. His goal was to mechanically produce familiar images until they no longer held any meaning. Like saying the same word over and over until it sounds like nonsense. This explains paintings such as Fragile Handle with Care, which depicts the word fragile repeatedly, until the words become nearly abstract. Similarly, Warhol made an eight hour long film of the Empire State Building, created using a single, drawn out shot. Warhol's work dominated the 1960s art and fashion scene. And he continued to push boundaries into the 1980s, with celebrity portraits and continued exploitation of celebrity. Who was Andy Warhol? Andy Warhol, 1928 to 1987, was an iconic artist celebrity whose pop art images of camels, soup cans and film celebrities continue to be highly recognizable and immensely valuable. Popularly known for his bleach blonde hair, dark sunglasses, and turtleneck sweaters. Andy Warhol was interested in stripping mass media images of their symbolic value, thus rendering them anew. Born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Warhol studied at the Carnegie Institute and moved New York City in 1949. Where he began a career in commercial art. He also worked in painting, printmaking, sculpture, and film. 
Warhol's New York studio, dubbed, The Factory. Was where Warhol and his team of assistants used silk screen machines to mass produce images. His goal was to mechanically produce familiar images until they no longer held any meaning. Like saying the same word over and over until it sounds like nonsense. This explains paintings such as Fragile Handle with Care, which depicts the word fragile repeatedly, until the words become nearly abstract. Similarly, Warhol made an eight hour long film of the Empire State Building, created using a single, drawn out shot. Warhol's work dominated the 1960s art and fashion scene. And he continued to push boundaries into the 1980s, with celebrity portraits and continued exploitation of celebrity. Why did Jasper Johns paint the American flag? Jasper Johns, 1930, is an American contemporary artist known for his painting, printing, and sculpture. His paintings frequently feature familiar objects and symbols such as targets, numbers, and the American flag. In line with the themes and goals of pop art, Johns was interested in using familiar objects in a new way. Rather than create new images, he wanted to depict things the mind already knows. As quoted in the Met Museum timeline of art history, he said that his decision to paint flags was inspired by a dream. And his realistic works served to highlight the artificiality of the symbols he represents. Why did Jasper Johns paint the American flag? Jasper Johns, 1930, is an American contemporary artist known for his painting, printing, and sculpture. His paintings frequently feature familiar objects and symbols such as targets numbers, and the American flag. In line with the themes and goals of pop art, Johns was interested in using familiar objects in a new way. Rather than create new images, he wanted to depict things the mind already knows. As quoted in the Met Museum timeline of art history, he said that his decision to paint flags was inspired by a dream. And his realistic works served to highlight the artificiality of the symbols he represents. Who was Robert Rauschenberg? Robert Rauschenberg, 1925-2008, along with Jasper Johns, his close friend, occasional lover, and business partner, was one of the most influential artists in pop art. And he is credited with leading art away from abstract expressionism. He is particularly famous for erasing a de Kooning drawing and then Framing the empty page in a work he called Erased de Kooning Drawing, 1953. Who was Robert Rauschenberg?
Robert Rauschenberg, 1925 to 2008, along with Jasper Johns, his close friend. Occasional lover and business partner was one of the most influential artists in pop art. And he is credited with leading art away from abstract expressionism. He is particularly famous for erasing a de Kooning drawing and then framing the empty page in a work he called Erased de Kooning Drawing, 1953. Who is David Hockney? David Hockney, 1937, is considered an important early pop artist. Though he dislikes that association and his work demonstrates a range of styles. A prominent contemporary artist whose career kick-started while he was still a student at the Royal College of Art in London. Hockney's early work frequently incorporated poetic fragments and personal themes. Paintings such as We Two Boys Together Clinging, 1961, are reminiscent of the art brute of Jean. Du Buffet with scrawled handwriting and childlike forms. Hockney's mid-career paintings are notably smooth and painted with acrylic. Reflecting the artist's skill as a graphic artist as well as a painter. His most famous pop art work is arguably, the Big Splash, 1967. A brightly painted scene of a California swimming pool in which a jarring and geometric diving board juts into the center of the scene. A swirled splash breaks the smooth monotony of the pool's blue water, creating a photo-like image. In the 1970s and 80s. He experimented with collage by incorporating Polaroid fragments into highly ordered paintings. His work with photography led to a prestigious award from the Royal Photographic Society in 2003 Hockney continues to paint and receive recognition for his work, including monumental landscapes such as a bigger Grand Canyon. 1998 which is composed of over 60 individual paintings. Who is David Hockney? David Hockney, 1937, is considered an important early pop artist. Though he dislikes that association and his work demonstrates a range of styles. A prominent contemporary artist whose career kick-started while he was still a student at the Royal College of Art in London. Hockney's early work frequently incorporated poetic fragments and personal themes. Paintings such as We Two Boys Together Clinging, 1961 are reminiscent of the art brute of Jean. Du Buffet with scrawled handwriting and childlike forms. Hockney's mid-career paintings are notably smooth and painted with acrylic. Reflecting the artist's skill as a graphic artist as well as a painter. His most famous pop art work is arguably, The Big Splash, 1967. A brightly painted scene of a California swimming pool in which a jarring and geometric diving board juts into the center of the scene. A swirled splash breaks the smooth monotony of the pool's blue water, creating a photo-like image. In the 1970s and 80s. He experimented with collage by incorporating Polaroid fragments into highly ordered paintings. 
his work with photography led to a prestigious award from the Royal Photographic Society in 2003 Hockney continues to paint and receive recognition for his work, including monumental landscapes such as a bigger Grand Canyon. 1998, which is composed of over 60 individual paintings. Why did Roy Lichtenstein paint comic book images? Roy Lichtenstein, 1923-1997, whose early work reflected interest in Cubism and Abstract Expressionism, began to make his comic book paintings in the 1960s. With paintings such as Wham! 1963, and Eddie Diptych, 1962. Lichtenstein transformed comic images into monumental works of fine art by enlarging them and rendering them with the so-called Ben Day dots used to print newspaper images. His approach has been described by some critics as a parody, but one in line with the goals of pop art. While Lichtenstein was able to transform the low art of comic books into fine art paintings, he also did the opposite. His yellow brush stroke, 1965, depicts a single smear of yellow paint. With so much detail it becomes nearly laughable, and completely banal. He also converted famous masterpieces. Such as Vincent van Gogh's Bedroom in Alls, 1888, into his iconic comic style. One of Lichtenstein's goals in creating these comic like images was to encourage the viewer to question the way supposedly realistic paintings accurately depict reality. Why did Roy Lichtenstein paint comic book images? Roy Lichtenstein, 1923-1997, whose early work reflected interest in Cubism and Abstract Expressionism, began to make his comic book paintings in the 1960s. With paintings such as Wham! 1963, and Eddie Diptych, 1962. Lichtenstein transformed comic images into monumental works of fine art by enlarging them and rendering them with the so-called Ben Day dots used to print newspaper images. His approach has been described by some critics as a parody, but one in line with the goals of pop art. While Lichtenstein was able to transform the low art of comic books into fine art paintings, he also did the opposite. His yellow brush stroke, 1965, depicts a single smear of yellow paint. With so much detail it becomes nearly laughable, and completely banal. He also converted famous masterpieces. Such as Vincent van Gogh's Bedroom in Alls, 1888, into his iconic comic style. One of Lichtenstein's goals in creating these comic like images was to encourage the viewer to question the way supposedly realistic paintings accurately depict reality.